Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another political episode. So, let's take a little look here. Uh, there's supposed to be an election coming up in April for, um, three, for three months from now. Um, so, uh, there is going to be a Supreme Court election in Wisconsin. Um, and this here is a pretty important election. Uh, according to what Ben Wick Wickler said, uh, it's basically the most important election nobody's ever heard of, uh, especially in Wisconsin. This pretty much is trumping uh, the 2022 gubernatorial election in Wisconsin. While Republicans had the chance to take down Tony Evers, that ultimately failed. So let's we need a little background here. So you know here we have uh, an election here. Uh, the Wisconsin Supreme Court election of 2023 is scheduled for Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, since there are more than two candidate for the candidates for this seat. A nonpartisan primary election will be held on February 21st, 2023, where the top two candidates will advance to the April general election. The incumbent justice, Patience R Roggensack, is retiring after 20 years on the court. Although although the Wisconsin Supreme Court ju justices are considered nonpartisan, Rock and Sack has identified as a conservative and has voted with the conservative four out of three majority of the court, which has largely endorsed the Republican Party's positions. Four candidates are running for the seat, including two self-identified conservatives, former Sup Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Danielle Kelly and Waukesha County Circuit Judge Jennifer Doro, and two liberal-identified candidates, Dane County Circuit Judge Everett Mitchell and Milwaukee County Circuit Judge Janet Protasikwicks. I don't want Because the race will determine the ideological balance of the court for at least the next two years, it is considered to have abnormal importance. Wisconsin Democratic Party Chair De Ben Wickler called it the most important election nobody's ever heard of. The outcome could determine how the court rules on future invo cases involving abortion rights, voting rights, and redistrict redistricting. Additionally, because the court rejected Donald Trump's false claims of fraud in the 2020 presidential election, the outcome of this race could determine how the court rules if a similar attempt is made to overturn the 2024 election. Let's not jump all the way there yet. It's too early. But we still have this election to deal with. So, so taking a look here, um, there will be an election um, in April. Uh, here is the primary election scheduled to be on a said the 21st of February uh, and we'll be covering that too so uh, so we have Jennifer Doro um, Mitchell Everett Mitchell so I'm gonna I'm gonna think here um, we're gonna do a situation and of course we won't know uh for sure but let's see what it looked like if we do like a we're gonna do our first prediction let's see most likely well i think most likely we'll get in daniel kelly is a supreme court justice very on the top uh not as um for wisconsin very well known justice of the wisconsin supreme court so i don't see why he can't get nominated but it depends um what political position is he in? So, um... Okay, yeah, so he was appointed by Scott Walker, a Republican, let's acknowledge, Governor Scott Walker. Uh, so, he is pretty much a conservative. Let's just double check. So... So, being a conservative and being a Wisconsin Supreme Court justice, this give this is give, giving Daniel Kelly a good chance, uh, being well known and experienced already. He knows the atmosphere of the Wisconsin Supreme Court uh, compared to the other three. Um, so we're gonna put uh, Kelly for our um, 
Republican, and uh, let's acknowledge they are not. They're nonpartisan. They're not being. They may be endorsed by political parties, but they're not running under the parties. And Supreme Court justices are supposed to be nonpartisan. They're supposed to be neutral, uh, not take sides. But are they going to probably take sides? Yes. Probably, because they're normal individuals with opinions like us. They're not like George Washington, where they have to, they're have they told to stay neutral. Of course, they're probably going to have their own opinions. So, then other than that, there's Jan Janet Protaskowitz. Uh, I don't know what, how to pronounce her name. Um... She's from the Milwaukee County Circuit, Judge. I'm going to do Mitchell. Um, just, we'll do Mitchell. I mean, th we're not predicting the primary and how we'll go, but this is how what I'm thinking will turn out. So we have Mitchell is from Dane County, the Dane County Circuit Judge. Um, so take it a look here. Um, we have our election, um, and I don't know, are, is, if, are people going to be voting in this election? If they are, please let me know, but, so I'm just going to assume people are voting, um, so, this is what my prediction is. So we know Democrats and Republicans did pretty good in Wisconsin um, last year. Republicans managed to win three elections in Wisconsin, Democrats four. Um, Democrats managed to win, uh, including the gubernatorial race, um, and Republicans managed to seize the Senate, U.S. Senate race in Wisconsin. But the question is, so both have a good pose for victory. So, what I'm thinking here, what this is going to turn out classically, is going to be like a 2020 situation. We have Douglas County, uh, Bayfield County, and Ashland County. These are this is like uh, going to, up to Minnesota. This is like Cook Lake and St. Louis County. Uh, they have a lot in common with these two. This is like the Iron Range of Wisconsin. Uh, they're both very rural, and despite Douglas County holding the little suburban superior, which is influenced by the neighboring next door Duluth. Uh, Duluth is, is probably arguably a reason why these are very Democrat, but however, they are low in population. So if Democrats do win, Republicans probably don't really need to sweat. Let's keep in mind, these counties have been voting Democrat since the 1920s. So they're strong Democrat strongholds, uh, although they're more moderate now. Um, but the pop, uh, all that matters is the population. So Euclid County holding the city of Euclid is a big, is a competitive, not even a competitive county. It's a pretty county up for Democrats. Uh, La Crosse County, holding the city of La Crosse, is a big Democrat county. Um, and then we have Sauk County. And Sauk County is a toss-up. Uh, Dane, for sure, is holding the capital of Madison. That is a county that probably will be going up for Democrats, for sure. It's the second most popular county. It is uh, over 70% Democrat, uh, holding the capital. Iowa County has been going out for Democrats for a very long time. Rock and Green Counties, for sure, I do think will be going for the Democrat camp. Um, the most Democrat county of them all is Menominee County, Wisconsin's Native American stronghold. This holds the Menom. I don't know what tribe uh, they have there, but this is a very rural county, however, uh, is... 90% Native American. Very strong. Uh, Native Americans occupy this area. They've uh, voted Democrat since the county's formation. Never, ever, ever going to Republicans in the county's history, I believe. Uh, this is probably a win for Democrats. Um, Milwaukee County is a count is the most populous county. 
for sure holding the city of Milwaukee is definitely going to go. So these are the Democrat strongholds. The counties for sure that Democrats will probably win. So I'm going to now take a look at... Uh, and I'm not going to go over the Republican counties because let's admit it, Republicans win a lot of counties other than the Democrats. Um, it's going to be pretty hard uh, reviewing all these counties. Um, this is Vernon County, I believe. It did go to uh, Governor Evers. Um, so this could be a possible toss up. I'm going to pull up the 2022 election map also. So yeah, as you see, an increase in Democrats. And I can't say that... Um, I cannot say that it's gotten more democratic because guess what? Re that Republicans won, did pretty good in the Senate election. So it's controversial. But Ben said, I would say Vernon County, which voted for Trump twice, it went forevers. So that's a toss up. Columbia County, it went for Trump. However, it's also a pretty good toss up county. Like, 50-50. Um, Portage has been going for Democrats and never has went for Republicans. However, it's a huge toss-up now. Um, so we're just not going to color it. Um, You'll excuse me, I'm just... Well, Kenosha, Kenosha Rassi counties, um, they have gone for Democrats, but they retrospect, they have went to Trump and voted against Evers, and they've went for Republicans all the way in 2022. So, I do think they're pretty pro-choice. If abortion is an issue in this uh, Supreme Court justice, in this Supreme Court election, like it's making it out to be, uh, they could very possibly go Democrat, but it's too early, way too early to tell now. Um, we just need to go through this, the motion of it. Brown County can possibly go if abortion is an issue. And let's, I know a lot of Americans identify as pro-choice. Um, ab abortion is a serious issue in the country. Um, however, so which, and we, it, this resulted to Kentucky, Montana going down, going for pro, the pro-choice camp. Um, and can Wisconsin go to the pro-choice camp? Absolutely. Um, Yes, like Kentucky uh, is a good example. Uh, the government is very pro-life. The people, very libertarian. Uh, they do think a woman should have the right to choose when it comes to an abortion. Uh, I did not mean to call her Portage County. So... So it's sort of gonna be have to be a tie, a toss up here. Um, I'm gonna give Sock County to the Mitchell. Uh, Portage County has been going for Democrats a long time. I just think it would make more sense for them to go. Like, why not? If abortion is going to be hu a huge issue in this election, um, it would have to go this way. Columbia County, having it gone to Evers could possibly t turn to, um, could possibly have it turn to, uh, 
the Mitchell camp. And that said, um, the Vernon, when that comes, that's an important one too. It's a hard one. Hmm. As of right now, we're probably going to give it to the Democrats. Um, let me know if you disagree with me. I'd love to hear your opinions, but this is what I'm thinking it would look like. Pretty much of a Democrat win. It would be like a close one. But if um, abortion has been such a huge issue um, for a very long time, um, this is probably what it's probably going to turn out as it's looking like right now. So let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think how this election will probably turn out? Uh, Mitchell win or a Kelly win? Of course, this is a very important election for Wisconsin. Um, yeah, we're going to call it for... Columbia County, Vernon County. So let me know in the comments below. And once again, thank you all for watching. And we'll be covering those elections involving the Republican Party and the Republican Party chairman. And I have to look up, does the Democrats have a chairmanship? Because all I've been hearing is Republicans. Uh, because we've been making a big deal about the Republican leadership lately. Uh, so, um... Yeah, yeah, Democratic Party leadership in Italy election. Well, I care less about Italy. We need the United States. Because I'm willing to do the Democratic Party too. Chairman of the Democratic Progressive Party. Never mind. This is totally not the case. So yeah, we'll figure it out. Once again, thank you all for watching this this video, and we'll see you all guys on the next political episode.